subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In my previous lecture video, I have discussed about types of superconductors. In this lecture video, I will discuss about Josephson effect and applications of superconductors. So let's get started. The content of this lecture video is as follows. First of all, I will discuss upon Josephson effect that is DC and AC Josephson effect. Followed by I will explain about applications of superconductors in superconducting transmissions and electricity, superconducting magnets, frictionless bearings, electronics, medical and transport that is maglev trains. First of all let's see what is Josephson effect. The Josephson effect is an example of a macroscopic quantum phenomena. It is named after the British physicist Brian David Josephson who predicted in 1962 the mathematical relationships for the current and the voltage across the weak link. The Josephson effect is the phenomena of supercurrent, a current that flows indefinitely long without any voltage applied across a device known as a Josephson junction, which consists of two or more superconductors coupled by a weak link. The weak link can consist of a thin insulating barrier known as superconductor insulator superconductor junction or SIS junction. A short section of non superconducting metal SNS or a physical constriction that weakens the superconductivity at the point of contact SSS. As shown in this diagram, Josephson Junction Array chip developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology as a standard hold, whereas the electrical symbol for Josephson Junction is shown here. Now let's see what is DC Josephson effect. Superconductor insulator superconductor junction that is SIS junction is shown in this diagram. When two superconductors are separated by a thick insulating layer, which is greater than 10 nanometer behaves as two independent superconductors. When the insulating layer is thin, that is nearly one nanometer, it becomes a system of coupled conductors as shown in this figure. In figure A, PB, that is lead and tin, SN, are coupled with insulator and connected to the circuit. The current is flowing through the circuit is with the help of Cooper pair electrons as shown in figure B. The concept of Cooper pair we have already discussed in our previous lecture. In DC Josephson effect, the Cooper pairs tunnel easily through the barrier that is insulating layer as a single unit. The Cooper pairs can be represented by a wave function which is the same for all pairs. The insulating layer introduces a phase difference between the wave function of Cooper pairs on opposite sides. Due to this, a supercurrent appears across the junction even though the applied voltage is zero. This effect is known as DC Josephson effect. The supercurrent through the junction is given by IS is equal to IC sine phi where phi is the phase difference between the wave functions describing Cooper pairs and IC is the critical current at zero voltage condition. The behavior of Cooper pairs as a function in superconductor through insulating layer and then superconductor is shown in this diagram. Now let's see AC Josephson effect. If a DC voltage is applied across Josephson junction, it introduces an additional phase on the Cooper pairs during tunneling. The DC voltage generates an alternating current I is given by capital I is equal to capital I C sin phi plus delta phi. Due to DC voltage, the energies of Cooper pairs on both sides of the barrier differ in energy by 2 EV. Cooper pair contains two electrons 
Therefore, hence the energy is 2 into electron volt that is 2 eV. In AC Josephson effect using quantum mechanical calculations, it can be shown that delta phi is equal to 2 pi t in bracket 2 eV upon h. Thus, the alternating current across the junction is given by I is equal to IC into sign of in bracket phi plus 2 pi t in bracket 2 eV divided by h bracket complete. This current can be represented by an alternating current of frequency nu is equal to 2 eV upon h. This frequency only depends on the applied voltage. This effect is known as a AC Josephson effect. The frequency of alternating currents does not depend on the dimensions of the superconductors. Also, this frequency does not depend on properties of superconductors such as critical temperature, chemical composition, etc. At voltage V is equal to 1 volt, AC current of frequency 483.6 megahertz is produced. Now let's see few problems which are based on Josephson effect. First, a Josephson junction with a voltage difference of 650 microvolt radiates electromagnetic radiations. Calculate its frequency. The solution of this problem is as follows. We have formula nu is equal to 2 eV upon h. By simply putting the values in this formula, we can try it nu is equal to 2 into charge on electron is 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19 into voltage is given 650 into 10 raise to minus 6 that is the micro volt divided by Planck's constant is 6.63 into 10 raise to minus 34 therefore after calculating this we can write nu is equal to 3.13 into 10 raise to 11 hertz so this is the solution of this problem now let's see next problem calculate the voltage required to produce a frequency of 2 into 10 raise to 11 hertz across the josephson junction the solution of this problem is as follows we have formula nu is equal to 2 ev upon h so simply rearranging this equation we can write capital v that is the voltage is equal to nu h upon 2 e after simply putting the values in this formula, we can write capital V is equal to 2 into 10 raise to 11 into Planck's constant 6.63 into 10 raise to minus 34 divided by 2 into charge on electron 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19. So after calculating this, we can write the voltage capital V is equal to 414.38 micro hold. So this is the voltage required to produce the frequency of 2 into 10 raise to 11 hertz across the Josephson junction. Now let's see squid. S Q U I D. The squid is means superconducting quantum interface devices. Squid is a very sensitive magnetometer used to measure extremely subtle, that is the very small magnetic flux of the order of 10 raise to minus 18 Tesla. Its working is based on superconducting loops containing Josephson junctions. Now let's see the construction of a squid. Squids are usually fabricated from lead or pure niobium. The tunnel barrier is oxidized onto lead or niobium surface. The entire device is cooled to within a few degrees of absolute zero with liquid helium. A schematic of two junction DC squid is shown in this figure. It consists of two Josephson junctions arranged in parallel. In this diagram, magnetic field is passed through the ring of Josephson junction, whereas the superconductor biasing current is connected to it. When superconductor in Josephson junction ring is connected to the biasing current, voltage variation for steadily increasing magnetic flux. One period of voltage variation corresponds to an increase of one flux quantum which is shown in this diagram in the red color waveform. Now let's see the superconducting quantum interface devices working, how it works. As shown in this diagram, a constant DC supercurrent is applied to the squid. This current is known as bias current which enters into a squid through arm C as shown in this diagram. 
it is divided along the paths a and b and again merge into one and loose through the arm d current i1 and i2 are currents tunneling through the josephson junctions now let's see in absence of magnetic field in a superconductor a single wave function describes all the cooper pairs the wave function experiences a phase shift at the josephson junction p and q in absence of magnetic field phase difference across p and q is zero now let's see in presence of magnetic field when a magnetic field is applied it changes the quantum mechanical phase difference across each of two junctions this phase difference between reuniting currents delta naught is directly proportional to the magnetic flux phi through the ring the voltage across the josephson junction oscillates with the changes in phase at two junctions this voltage depends upon the change in magnetic flux thus by noting down the voltage across the junction the change in flux and corresponding magnetic field can be measured therefore total current through parallel josephson junction can be written as it is equal to 2 into i not sin delta not into cos of e phi by h bar therefore in squid a progressive increase or decrease of magnetic flux causes the current to oscillate between a maximum and minimum when the magnetic flux increases by one flux quantum one flux quantum that is phi not is equal to h upon 2 e that is equal to 2.06 into 10 raised to minus 15 weber thus a squid can detect extremely small magnetic fields of the order of 10 raised to minus 15 weber that is 10 raised to minus 11 tesla this sensitivity can further be increased using a flux transformer now let's see the applications of squid there are several applications of the squid amongst them let's see first magnetoencephalography that is meg MEG is a technique for mapping brain activities. It can detect magnetic fields produced naturally in the brain which is of the order of 10 raised to minus 14 tesla. The human heart also produces a magnetic field of the order of 10 raised to minus 14 tesla which can also be detected by squids. Next application of squid is MRI scan. Magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI also known as nuclear magnetic resonance imaging is a scanning technique for creating detailed images of the human body the scan uses a strong magnetic field and radio waves to generate images of parts of the body that can't be seen with x-rays ct scans or ultrasound next application is non destructive corrosion testing the magnetism of material changes due to the corrosion which can be detected using squid Next is oil prospecting presence of oil field changes the magnetism of the region which can be detected by squid next is earthquake prediction earthquake prediction can be done by detecting change in earth's magnetic field next is mineral exploration mineral exploration by detecting variation in magnetic fields inside earth crust geothermal energy survey etc can be done by using squid So these are the several applications of the squid. Now let's see the applications of superconductors in various fields such as superconducting transmission lines and electricity, superconducting magnets, frictionless bearings in electronics, in medical field and in transportation that is maglev trains. So let's see all these applications one by one in detail. First application superconducting transmission lines and electricity. Conventionally the electricity is transported through copper cables generally 10% to 15% of generated electricity is lost in overcoming resistance of cables it is also required a huge setup the use of superconducting transmission lines would have following advantages first advantage is minimum that is zero heat losses when superconductors will be used as cables resistive and heat losses are avoided and electrical power transmission can be done more efficiently a network of superconducting power cables could be varying thousands times more electric current than copper cables second advantage is carrying a large power 
using superconducting transmission lines a large power could be transmitted at a fairly low voltage large infrastructures such as huge transformers banks and multiple high voltage ac transmission lines on towers could be minimized next advantage is high current carrying density using superconductors such as bsccco in tape forms and ybco in thin film form current densities above 10000 amperes per square centimeter could be transmitted next advantage is superconductors are used in superconducting magnetic energy storage that is smes that store electric energy in the form of electric current in a closed superconducting coil the current remains trapped forever in the coil as there is absolutely no energy loss this current can be recovered in a very short amount of time next advantage is transformers that is superconducting coils in transformers and electrical machines generates much stronger magnetic fields it will also eliminate ed current losses and hysteresis losses therefore the size of motors and generators will be drastically reduced next application is superconducting magnets conventional electromagnets are very much bigger in size they consume large electrical power to maintain the magnetic field and also require continuous cooling the use of superconductors in designing of magnets would have following advantages first advantage is intense magnetic field superconducting magnets has ability to transport a very high current density with almost no resistance due to this electromagnets can be constructed that generates intense magnetic fields with little electrical power input type 2 superconductors such as niobium titanium alloys niobium tin alloys can be produce high magnetic fields of around 9 to 10 tesla next advantage is compact and more efficient setup superconducting magnet systems are quite compact and occupy a small space next advantage is it can be operated for longer duration in the persistent mode of operation the lr time constant is extremely long and the magnet can be operated for days or even months at a nearly constant field next application of superconductors is frictionless bearings a bearing is a machine element that bears the load of minimizes the friction between moving parts most of the energy of bearings is consumed in overcoming friction hence it results into reduction of efficiency the use of superconductors in designing of bearings uses principle of meissner's effect and magnetic field repulsion due to this it is kind of magnetic cushions and it would have following advantages first advantage is no lubrication and maintenance superconducting bearings provide the highest efficiency of all bearing technologies and prevent contact friction and wear they need no lubrication or maintenance and can be used under extreme conditions such as vacuum cryogenic environments etc next advantage is more efficient bearings superconducting magnetic bearings are virtually frictionless dust free wear and tear less next advantage is high driving speed rotational bearings for very high driving speeds are possible next is frictionless motors in frictionless motors the principle of magnetic air cushion between stator and rotator is used next application of superconductors is in electronics variety of devices such as quids transistors ic's etc can be designed using superconductors main advantage of using superconductors in designing of electronic components is reduction in heat losses and flow of current in electronic circuit without any resistance some of the applications of superconductors in electronics are listed here first is josephson junctions josephson junctions are used in fast electronic switches or sensitive magnetometers a magnetometer is able to detect very small magnetic fields of the order of 10 to to minus 15 tesla next is supercomputers the semiconductor logic elements have a speed limit they operate at a speed in order of few nanoseconds logic elements based on josephson junction can operate at the speed of few picoseconds use of superconductors in logic gates 
will drastically increase the speed of computers. Next is squid. Squids are used for non-destructive corrosion testing, magnetoencephalography, observing neural activities inside the brain, that is MRI scan, study of magnetic properties of material, oil prospecting, mineral exploration, earthquake prediction, geothermal energy survey, etc. Such applications we have already seen in the previous slides. Next is transistor. Superconducting transistors based on Josephson junctions could be used to switch voltages very quickly. They will significantly speed up the processing of signals or data in microprocessors. Next is circuitry connections. Circuit connections can be made through superconductive films. This would have advantage that information can be transmitted more quickly without losses. Next is IC fabrication. At present, processing power of ICs is limited due to I square R losses of components. Use of superconductors will make ICs more efficient. Now let's see the applications of superconductors in medical field. Two of the properties of superconductors are extremely useful in medical field. Production of extensive magnetic field in devices such as MRI up to 3 Tesla and detection of smaller magnetic fields using squares of the order of 10 to minus 14 tesla. Magnetoencephalography that is MEG is a technique for investigating human brain activities on a milliseconds basis. It can be detected where in a brain activity is produced. Brain generates neuromagnetic signals that are extremely small of the order of 10 to minus 12 tesla. MEG scanner use squids to detect this extremely small magnetic field. Next is magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI. Also known as nuclear magnetic resonance imaging is a scanning technique for creating detailed images of the human body. The scan uses a strong magnetic field of the order of 1.5 tesla or higher up to 3 tesla and radio waves to generate images of parts of the body that can't be seen with x-rays, CT scans or ultrasounds. This we have already discussed in previous slides. If conventional metal wires are used to produce such a strong magnetic field, they would heat to extent of melting. Water molecules in human body contain hydrogen nuclei that is protons and MRI scanner applies a very strong magnetic field about 0.2 to 3 teslas which aligns the proton spins. This alignment of spin can be detected by squids. MRI diagnosis is used for investigation of brain including detection of tumors. MRI is also used for investigation of sports injuries, muscle injuries, skeletal problems, spinal injuries, etc. Now finally let's see the applications of superconductors in transportation. One example here is Maglev trains. In conventional transportation system, frictional between the wheels and the ground or rail is one of the crucial elements. Due to friction, there is a limitation of speed of the vehicle. It also increases wear and tear. Magnetic levitation trains, that is Maglev trains, is a floating vehicle for land transportation. Maglev trains do not slide over the rails but float on an air cushion over a strongly magnetized track. As there is no mechanical friction, speeds up to 500 km per hour can be easily achieved. The advantages of superconductors are permanent currents as high as about 700,000 amperes can be passed through the superconducting coils. This produces a strong magnetic field of the order of 5 tesla enough to levitate the train. This is all about Josephson effect and applications of superconductors and overall about superconductivity. In next lecture video, I will discuss about unit 6 that is non-destructive testing, NDT and nanotechnology. So don't miss my next lecture video. Thank you. Follow this video in the description. The link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.